COVID-19 By now, everyone knows about this global pandemic. Stay home, social distancing, lockdown was heard every time. Before, works were carried out from offices. Now, stay home, fight COVID-19. It is time to fully utilize technology. Online meeting, online learning, online seminar, online shopping, etc. New work culture developed. Works get done via digitalization, using technology and internet. We boost performance, be productive and competitive. My personal advice, stay home and stay productive. From me, Dr. Rizar. Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic. Are you running an ICT business? Do you face difficulties taking your business to the next level? Would you want advice or guidance from the industry experts to overcome your challenges? Digital Productivity Nexus, in collaboration with the ICT industry experts, will be guiding you through a virtual one-to-one -one session. The program is known as the Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic. You could join the Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session and ask the industry experts on how to enhance your business presence, deliver better services, and improve productivity. Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session will be focusing on the following six areas. Strategic positioning, technical solutions, business operation, financial consultation, legal and regulatory support, in business development and marketing solutions. Join our free Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session and learn from the best in the industry in a one-to-one -one virtual advisory session. Do take up this opportunity to improve your business and profitability. Let us go big with digital. Go big with digital. Digital Virtual Business Clinic. Contact us www.mpc.gov.my forward slash digital victory Are you running a business in Malaysia? Are you experiencing challenges in complying with the regulations when applying for licenses, permits, registrations, and undergoing inspections? Do you think some of the regulatory compliance requirements are not necessary in impacting your business and you are not sure who to refer to concerning those unnecessary regulatory issues? Well, the Government of Malaysia has initiated a program known as Malaysia Muda, or in short, hashtag MyMuda, to reduce or remove the unnecessary regulatory burdens that you encountered. By doing so, your regulatory compliance cost or the cost of doing business could be reduced. The Prime Minister of Malaysia has decided to make public services more business friendly, faster and predictable via the Economic Action Council. The Prime Minister is aware that those criteria are critical to your business growth, productivity and competitiveness. Let me highlight some examples of unnecessary regulatory burdens to you. First overlap or inconsistency with other regulations. Second, unclear or questionable objectives of regulations. Third, outdated regulations. Fourth, too many interaction with regulators for a single application. Fifth, excessive paperwork and compliance requirements. Sixth, too long time taken to process your application. Next, how could you channel your concerns? Well, Simply visit the Unified Public Consultation Portal at https colon forward slash forward slash upc.mpc.gov.my. You could also suggest how the regulatory delivery could be improved or innovate to reduce or remove the unnecessary regulation burdens. You may know some best practices. Once your concerns and suggestions are submitted, the Malaysia Productivity Corporation MPC, will work with the regulators and businesses to analyze, validate and recommend solutions to PAMUDA and later to the Economic Action Council. You can rest assured that the government is serious about making doing business in Malaysia easy or MUDA in Malay. That is how the abbreviation hashtag MyMuda came about.
Have you ever heard about SWOT analysis? Would you like to know what SWOT analysis is? Watch this two-minute video and you can easily understand it. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. SWOT analysis is a technique or method for assessing four aspects of your business competitiveness. It could be performed on an organization, a product, or a service. Let me walk you through SWOT analysis. Strengths are things that your organization does exceptionally well. The strengths could include your people, process, marketing, branding, and others. Weaknesses are features of your organization that you could improve and avoid. Opportunities are chances for something positive to happen outside of your organization. You need, you need to get them for your business to be competitive. The possibilities could rise due to technological advancement and changes in market situations. Threats include anything that can negatively affect your business from the outside. An example could be disruption in the supply chain, changes in government policies and market requirements, or a shortage of recruits. Let us do a SWOT analysis for Tesla. I'm sure you know Tesla is the market leader of electric vehicles. Why should you use SWOT analysis and what are the benefits? SWOT analysis helps you to build on what you do well, to address what you're lacking, to minimize risks, and to take the most significant possible advantage of chances for success. Your business will become productive and competitive. Thus, you could lead the market and generate good revenue. Who should use SWOT analysis? Typically, the management of a company or firm should use the technique. When to use SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis needs to be done regularly for your organization, products, and services. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of 2 minutes smart management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. E-Shared Prosperity Organization ESPO Do you know there are about 100,000 organizations in Malaysia that are classified as a shared prosperity organization? Is your organization one of them? Would you like to know whether your organization qualifies to be recognized as a shared prosperity organization? In line with Malaysia Shared Property Vision 2030, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry is collaborating with the Ministry of Human Resources and the Malaysia Productivity Corporation to identify and recognize shared prosperity organizations. We want to build a database of shared prosperity organizations and make it available to the public the government recognizes your efforts in sharing wealth with your employees. Here are a few simple steps to check whether your organization qualifies as a shared prosperity organization. Step 1. Browse www.mpc.gov.my backslash ESPO. Step 2. Answer 14 simple survey questions. Step 3. You will immediately get the result. If your organization qualifies, congratulations! An SPO recognition certificate will be issued to you. The recognition would elevate your organization's image as a good employer, and more people would want to work for your organization. Well, let's start the process of becoming a shared prosperity organization. www.mpc.gov.my backslash ESPO Are you experiencing difficulties in growing your retail and F&B business? Do you want to know about the power of branding and marketing strategy? Would you opt for digitalization of your business? Are you aware that managing your business supply chain is crucial to boosting your profitability? Retail and Food and Beverage Virtual Advisory Clinic, in collaboration with industry experts, will be providing guidance to you that could enhance your business presence, improve its efficiency and productivity. RFB VAC will be advising you on the following areas Branding and Marketing Strategy Business Digitalization and Supply Chain Management Join our free RFB VAC session and learn from the best in industry in a one-to-one -one virtual session Don't miss this great opportunity to improve your business and profitability 
Retail and Food and Beverage Virtual Advisory Clinic. Revitalize your retail and F&B business. Contact us www.mpc.gov.my slash rfbvac Virtual Advisory Clinic for Regulatory Impact Analysis, RIA. Apply online at www.mpc.gov.my slash RIA. Virtual Advisory Clinic, BAC for RIA. Do you know your regulations are good in quality? Are you planning to develop or amend regulation? Do you need to know about good practices in developing regulations? Well, Regulatory Impact Analysis, RIA, is the answer for you. And Malaysia Productivity Corporation, MPC, is ready to facilitate you. RIA ensures that your regulations meet the objective and will be accepted by businesses and citizens. Why? RIA ensures good practices, including public consultation, cost-benefit analysis, and impact analysis on the proposed regulations. Join MPC Virtual Advisory Clinic for RIA. Simply contact us. We will see you virtually using online meeting for one hour, and together we will work with you to produce quality regulations. Please visit mpc.gov.my slash RIA to discover more about Virtual Advisory Clinic for RIA. www.mpc.gov.my slash RIA Are you aware that behavioral insights have been actively used in designing and implementing public policies in many countries throughout the world? Are you aware that behavioral insights could be a policy tool in addition to regulations and incentives? Do you know that Malaysia Productivity Corporation, or MPC in short, has been entrusted with developing and coordinating behavioral insights initiatives in Malaysia? Well, let me tell you about the process of how a behavioral insight project or case study is being carried out for the public sector. I hope that you might want to consider your organization to participate in behavioral insights projects to improve the effectiveness of your policies. Effective policies ensure a high probability of success for governments that intend to achieve their desired outcomes. There are eight steps for you to take part in with the community and public sector to make use of behavioral insights in policymaking. The first step is for you to express interest with MPC that you want to know about using behavioral insights application in public policymaking. How? It is simple. Just contact or send an email to the Director General of MPC. Step 2. You will be contacted and an initial discussion will be set up via an online meeting platform to discuss your interest further. Step 3. Your team will be invited for an onboarding program to familiarize them about behavioral insights through structured online training and online workshops. At the end of the journey, potential projects are identified to be considered for using the behavioral insights approach. Step 4. A team will be formed compromising your organization team, MPC team, and academia team. The multi-teams or collaborations have proven to be a successful model for behavioral insights projects. Step 5. The project starts. The project starts with an understanding of the problem statement and the team will validate it. Data collection to understand the as-is behavior will be carried out. Finally, the behavioral gaps are identified. Step 6 is to establish the objectives of the project. Solutions are explored and designed usage of nudges typically are preferred. By using nudges, the target people are directed towards the selected option without removing the right for them to choose from various options. Step 7. Experiments are conducted for a while with a sample population. Most of the project makes use of the random control trial where groups of people are set up and given different nudges. At the time of the experiments, data is collected and the results are produced. Finally, step 8. Conclusions of the study and which nudges are the best is derived. Based on your findings, your organization's management may decide on potentially expanding the project to a bigger size of the population. Well, usage of behavioral insights has been proven in many countries around the world to be as effective as a policy tool. My recommendation is that your organization should seriously consider using behavioral insights in your policy design and implementation. One thing is for sure, the behavioral insights approach is very cost-effective as compared to regulatory or incentive-based methods. 
Well, join us at NPC to experiment using behavioral insights in public policymaking. We are entrusted to facilitate public service organizations to establish a competent behavioral insights team in your organization to continuously make use of behavioral insights in decision making. Well, see you in our next Behavior Insights video. Let me end by quoting, Managing behaviors is the key to achieving the desired outcomes. Eighty twenty Rule Pareto Principle What is the 80-20 Rule? Where can I apply the 80-20 Rule? Is 80-20 Rule useful for me? Well, 80-20 Rule, or sometimes known as the Pareto Principle, says that about 80% of outcomes or outputs are caused by 20% of inputs. Historically, Pareto, who is an Italian economist, noticed that approximately 80% of Italy's land was owned by 20% of the population. He also surveyed other countries and found to his surprise that a similar distribution applied. In the USA, the top 20% of earners paid about 80 to 90% of federal income taxes. Meanwhile, in the healthcare in the USA, about 20% of patients used 80% of healthcare resources. How can I use 80-20 rule in my business? Well, you need to identify the top 20% of your customers that give you 80% of sales. Once identified, you need to prioritize them by providing better services that are beyond their expectation. How can I use 80-20 to improve my productivity? It's easy. Review a normal daily activities, and you'll notice about 20% of those activities contribute 80% of the betterment of your life. Once again, prioritize them. Give more attention to them. Those activities which are less critical must be replaced. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of 2-Minute Smart Management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. Do you know how long it takes your money to grow double through passive investment? Most people save money in banks. The banks give you, say, 6% interest per year. My question to you, if you save $1,000, how long does it take to double your money to $2,000? Let me tell you the secret. Well, it is simple enough. Simply do the following. 72 divides by 6 equals 12 years. Yes, it takes approximately 12 years for your money to grow from $1,000 to $2,000 on the assumption you did not take out or deposit any money during that period. It was easy, right? You now have mastered the rule 72. And keep investing. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of 2 minutes smart management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. Hashtag Kedah Productive Tiga cadangan majukan perniagaan di musim COVID-19. Kita tahu virus COVID-19 boleh melumpuhkan perniagaan kita. Apa yang boleh kita lakukan untuk memperbaiki keadaan? Situasi 1. Kalau sekarang, peniaga dari gerai atau kedai. Cadangannya, mulakan perniagaan atas talian gunakan WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Lazada, Shopee dan lain-lain. Situasi 2. Kalau sekarang, hanya terima bayaran duit tunai saja. Cadangannya, mulakan terima bayaran secara perbankan atas talian e-wallet dan lain-lain. Ada pelbagai cara untuk buat bayaran kepada anda tanpa guna duit tunai. Situasi tiga. Kalau sekarang, kena pergi ke pejabat pelanggan untuk perbincangan dan menyampaikan perkhidmatan. Cadangannya, mulakan perbincangan atas talian secara maya dengan menggunakan aplikasi Zoom, GoMeeting, Webex dan lain-lain. Jom kita cuba perbincangan serta mesyuarat dengan pelanggan melalui teknologi ini. Mudah dan percuma. Hashtag Kedah Produktif Ingat nak, 
Duduk rumah, keluarga selamat dan tingkatkan produktiviti. Hashtag Kedah Produktif Mesej ini dibawakan khas oleh Perbadanan Produktiviti Malaysia Wilayah Utara. Jom bayar tanpa duit tunai. Tahukah anda, ramai rakyat Malaysia telah membuat bayaran tanpa menggunakan duit tunai. Bilangan transaksi melalui perbankan internet semakin meningkat. Jumlah wang dikeluarkan dari mesin ATM semakin menurun. Sekarang, perniagaan anda hanya menerima bayaran tunai sahaja. Perniagaan kita boleh bertambah maju jika kita juga bersedia menerima bayaran tanpa duit tunai. Pelanggan baru boleh berbelanja di kedai kita. Ada pelbagai cara untuk membuat bayaran kepada anda tanpa guna duit tunai. Apakah faedah kalau kita bayar tanpa guna duit tunai? Mudah, duit selamat, akaun tersusu rapi. Jom sertai siri seminar atas talian webinar tentang bayaran tanpa duit tunai. Percuma dan daftar sekarang. Are you aware that the process to set up a private hospital in Malaysia involves multiple regulators, thus regulations? Do you know who they are? Do you want to know about the handbook that documents the synchronized submission processes of getting approvals and harmonized technical requirements? In building and operating a private hospital in Malaysia, all developers and investors must comply with the Malaysian bylaws governed by local authorities. The other primary regulation is the Private Healthcare Facilities and Services Act of 1998, which is governed by the Ministry of Health under the purview of the Private Medical Practice Control Section. The local councils approve the zoning, building plans, and engineering plan of the hospital. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health approves the hospital operational requirements and issues the hospital operating license. Question. What are the main benefits or outcomes of the synchronized submission processes and harmonization of technical requirements? Private hospital developers have successfully got their approval faster and completed their hospital development sooner than before. Thus, the cost of doing business has reduced. The regulators are becoming more efficient and less wasteful of unnecessary administrative efforts and cost. Question. What is the handbook called and who participated in producing the document? It is called Handbook on Setting Up Private Hospitals in Malaysia. This handbook focuses on providing guidelines for the application, construction and operation of new private hospitals. The handbook is a collaborative initiative among stakeholders, i.e. Ministry of Health, local authorities, fire and rescue department, local government department and other technical agencies. Industry associations and professionals also contributed. The process was facilitated by Private Healthcare Productivity Nexus and Malaysia Productivity Corporation. Question. What is the improved processes of setting up a private hospital? Let me show you the eight processes of regulatory compliance of setting up a private hospital, which you can find in the handbook. Question. Who should use the handbook? This handbook serves as a standard reference to hospital developers, investors, local and foreign, technical consultants, officers of relevant local councils, Ministry of Health and other regulators. Question. Where can I get access to the handbook? You can download the information from the Private Medical Practice Control section of the Ministry of Health website, http colon forward slash forward slash medicalprac.moh.gov.my forward slash. Let us make sure the process of setting up a private hospital is efficient and effective. A large private hospital would benefit the people seeking medical treatments and create good job opportunities for Malaysians. I would like to end this video by reading the following quote from Christian Wolff, the famous German philosopher. Transparency and compliance with the law are factors of future development. Virtual Advisory Clinic, VAC for MEPN.
Are you facing difficulties in operating your business due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic? Are you worried about the future of your company? And you are not sure where to refer for advice? Well, the Machinery and Equipment Productivity Nexus, MEPN, is ready to facilitate you in providing guidance. MEPN was set up to improve the productivity of firms, sector, and the country. The solutions came from industry in the private and public partnership of MEPN. We invite you to join the MPC Virtual Advisory Clinic for machinery and equipment. Experienced industry advisors will be there to guide you. Contact us and we will see you virtually using online meeting for one hour. And together, we will work with you to find solutions to your challenges. Do contact MPC Advisory Clinic for machinery and equipment, MEPN at mpc.gov.my. Have you ever heard about SWOT analysis? Would you like to know what SWOT analysis is? Watch this two minute video and you can easily understand it. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. SWOT analysis is a technique or method for assessing four aspects of your business competitiveness. It could be performed on an organization, a product, or a service. Let me walk you through SWOT analysis. Strengths are things that your organization does exceptionally well. The strengths could include your people, process, marketing, branding, and others. Weaknesses are features of your organization that you could improve and avoid. Opportunities are chances for something positive to happen outside of your organization. You need, you need to get them for your business to be competitive. The possibilities could rise due to technological advancement and changes in market situations. Threats include anything that can negatively affect your business from the outside. An example could be disruption in the supply chain, changes in government policies and market requirements, or a shortage of recruits. Let us do a SWOT analysis for Tesla. I'm sure you know Tesla is the market leader of electric vehicles. Why should you use SWOT analysis and what are the benefits? SWOT analysis helps you to build on what you do well, to address what you're lacking, to minimize risks, and to take the most significant possible advantage of chances for success. Your business will become productive and competitive. Thus, you could lead the market and generate good revenue. Who should use SWOT analysis? Typically, the management of a company or firm should use the technique. When to use SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis needs to be done regularly for your organization, products, and services. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of 2 minutes smart management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. MPC Business Regulations Virtual Advisory Clinic BRVAC Do you plan to start a business or are you currently running a business in Malaysia? Are you aware which regulations you need to comply with when you are starting or conducting a business? Do you know who the regulators are? Are you experiencing challenges in complying with the regulations? Well, Malaysia Productivity Corporation's Business Regulations Virtual Advisory Clinic BRVAC could assist you by providing guidance in response to your queries. BRVAC ensures that you understand which regulations to comply with, who the regulators are, and what the procedures are. BRVAC helps minimize unnecessary regulatory burdens on your business in complying with regulations. BRVAC is an exclusive one-to-one -one virtual session with our industry experts, and it is free. Simply apply at www.mpc.gov.my slash BRVAC MPC Business Regulations Virtual Advisory Clinic Contact us www.mpc.gov.my slash BRVAC Do you know that governments use regulations to control the behavior of businesses and citizens towards their intended outcomes? Do you realize that these regulations are not free? Are you aware that businesses and citizens need to spend money to comply with the regulations? 
Are you aware that governments too have to spend a significant amount of money to administer and enforce the regulations? Well, in this video, I would like to share with you what made up the cost of regulations. It is crucial for us, including the governments, to be aware of the costs. These costs may become unnecessary, add burden to the parties being regulated, and cause market inefficiency that results in poor economic outcomes, hence social reduced welfare. An excellent regulatory practice is to eliminate the unnecessary regulatory cost for the businesses and citizens. Let me explain to you one by one the components that make up regulatory cost as per Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, definition. Regulatory costs comprise of five different components. They are compliance costs, financial costs, indirect costs, opportunity costs, and macroeconomic costs. These are all the costs when we adopt regulations, whether direct or indirect, and whether borne by business, citizens, and governments. Let me start with the compliance costs. There are three categories of compliance costs. The first one is the administrative costs, where the businesses have to spend money to comply with the requirement of the regulations. For example, in applying for a business license or a permit, they have to prepare the required data, information, and documents before they submit the applications. If the submission is manual, they have to pay for the cost of traveling and their time to do so. Beyond the administrative costs, sometimes businesses or citizens have incurred the implementation costs, direct labor costs, overhead, equipment costs, material costs, and the costs of external services to comply with the regulations. For example, a factory has to install air pollution detector devices as per regulation requirements. Collectively, these costs are grouped as the substantive compliance costs. The third category is the administration and enforcement costs, which is borne by the governments or regulators using public money. These costs include the costs of publicizing to business and citizens about the existence of the new regulations. The costs also cover developing and implementing new licensing or registration systems, assessing and approving applications, and processing renewals. They will also include administering and enforcing inspection and sanctions to respond to non-compliance. To summarize, there are three categories of compliance costs, administrative burdens, substantive compliance costs, and governments or regulators' administration and enforcement costs. It's that simple. Let me briefly explain to you the other four components of regulatory costs so that we have the complete picture of the total costs. The first one is the financial costs. They are the costs of capital deployed by businesses in meeting the regulatory compliance obligations. For example, the companies have to purchase specific equipment as per regulation requirements. Thus, they have to pay the costs to finance the procurement. The next one is the indirect costs, which are likely to arise as a result of behavioral changes prompted by the first round's impact of the regulations. The other regulatory costs are known as opportunity costs. The opportunity costs incurred due to the business's need to divert their money or expenditures to meet the regulatory compliance instead of spending it in a more productive usage. Finally, macroeconomic costs. These are costs impacted by critical macroeconomic variables such as GDP and employment caused by regulatory requirements. We cannot avoid paying for the regulatory costs. However, poorly administering and enforcing the regulations could lead to unnecessary regulatory burdens to businesses and citizens. Governments have to put in a lot of effort to remove the unnecessary regulatory burdens and thus unnecessary regulatory costs. The regulatory costs or regulatory compliance costs to business will eventually affect the customers of the goods and services. For example, a property developer paid some money to comply with regulations to build houses to local authorities. Businesses will add the amount paid into their cost of doing business, and consumers will eventually pay for it. Just to recap about regulatory costs, regulatory cost equals compliance costs plus financial costs plus indirect costs plus opportunity costs plus macroeconomic costs. See you in the next Malaysia Productivity Corporation's Good Regulatory Practices video.
Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. Are you running a business? Are you experiencing challenges in running your business due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic? Do you face difficulties in taking your business to the next level? Do you want advice from the industry experts to overcome your challenges? Your state government, together with Malaysia Productivity Corporation, has developed a program to solve your issues and enhance your business presence, services, and productivity. The program, which is designed for you, is known as the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is worth thousands of ringgit, but the state government will give it for free to a few hundred companies on a first-come, first-served basis. The Business Virtual Advisory Clinic session will be focusing on the following nine areas. Branding, Marketing, Digitalization and Technology, Human Resources, Finance, Business Operation, Supply Chain, Management, Regulations. How do you apply for the Business Virtual Advisory session? Here are the five steps. Step 1. You need to apply online by filling the form at the URL given. Make sure you fill in the form correctly, including describing your business activities. Then state one business concerns where you require advice. It's just a 10-minute effort. Step 2. The Secretariat will check your application for completeness and send for approval. Step 3. Once the application is approved, you will receive an email providing details of your advisory session, which will be conducted online via your computer or handphone. The email informs you date, time, and URL link for the meeting. Step 4. You join the meeting on the specified date and time by clicking the URL link. You will meet your advisor, and during the one-hour advisory session, you will have a golden opportunity to receive guidance from the expert. It is a valuable experience, and you will definitely benefit from it. Step 5. After the advisory session, you are required to fill in a feedback form. Please do that, as it will help improve the program. Well, please, take action now. Start applying for the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is free, but places are limited. So it is first come, first serve. Join our free Business Virtual Advisory Clinic session and learn from the best in the industry in an hour-long one-to-one session. You can improve your business and profitability. Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. Are you running a business? Are you experiencing challenges in running your business due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic? Do you face difficulties in taking your business to the next level? Do you want advice from the industry experts to overcome your challenges? Your state government, together with Malaysia Productivity Corporation, has developed a program to solve your issues and enhance your business presence, services, and productivity. The program, which is designed for you, is known as the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is worth thousands of ringgit, but the state government will give it for free to a few hundred companies on a first-come, first-serve basis. The Business Virtual Advisory Clinic session will be focusing on the following nine areas. Branding, Marketing, Digitalization and Technology, Human Resources, Finance, Business Operation, Supply Chain, Management, Regulations. How do you apply for the Business Virtual Advisory Session? Here are the five steps. Step 1. You need to apply online by filling the form at the URL given. Make sure you fill in the form correctly, including describing your business activities. Then state one business concerns where you require advice. It's just a 10-minute effort. Step 2. The Secretariat will check your application for completeness and send for approval. Step 3. Once the application is approved, you will receive an email providing details of your advisory session, which will be conducted online via your computer or handphone. The email informs you date, time, and URL link for the meeting. Step 4. You join the meeting on the specified date and time by clicking the URL link. 
You will meet your advisor, and during the one-hour advisory session, you will have a golden opportunity to receive guidance from the expert. It is a valuable experience, and you will definitely benefit from it. Step 5. After the advisory session, you are required to fill in a feedback form. Please do that, as it will help improve the program. Well, please, take action now. Start applying for the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is free, but places are limited. So it is first come, first serve. Join our free Business Virtual Advisory Clinic session and learn from the best in the industry in an hour-long one-to-one -one session. You can improve your business and profitability. Virtual Advisory Services. Are you running a private healthcare business? Are you experiencing issues with finance, technology, and compliance with regulations? Do you face challenges taking your business to the next level and you do not know where to go for advice? Private Healthcare Productivity Nexus, in collaboration with the industry experts, will be guiding you through a virtual one-to-one -one session. The program is known as the Virtual Advisory Services. You could join the Virtual Advisory Services session and ask the experts on how to enhance your business presence, deliver better services, and improve productivity. Virtual Advisory Services will be focusing on the following five areas. Financial, Regulations, Standard Operating Procedure, Technology and Telemedicine, Productivity and Performance. Join our free Virtual Advisory Services session and we will see you virtually via online meeting for one hour and together we will work with you to find solutions to your challenges. Do take up this opportunity to improve your business and profitability. Virtual Advisory Services. Contact us www.mpc.gov.my forward slash virtual advisory services. Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. Are you running a business? Are you experiencing challenges in running your business due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic? Do you face difficulties in taking your business to the next level? Do you want advice from the industry experts to overcome your challenges? Your state government, together with Malaysia Productivity Corporation, has developed a program to solve your issues and enhance your business presence, services, and productivity. The program, which is designed for you, is known as the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is worth thousands of ringgit, but the state government will give it for free to a few hundred companies on a first-come, first-served basis. The Business Virtual Advisory Clinic session will be focusing on the following nine areas. Branding, Marketing, Digitalization and Technology, Human Resources, Finance, business operation, supply chain, management, regulations. How do you apply for the business virtual advisory session? Here are the five steps. Step one, you need to apply online by filling the form at the URL given. Make sure you fill in the form correctly, including describing your business activities. Then state one business concerns where you require advice. It's just a 10 minute effort. Step 2. The Secretariat will check your application for completeness and send for approval. Step 3. Once the application is approved, you will receive an email providing details of your advisory session, which will be conducted online via your computer or handphone. The email informs you date, time, and URL link for the meeting. Step 4. You join the meeting on the specified date and time by clicking the URL link. You will meet your advisor, and during the one-hour advisory session, you will have a golden opportunity to receive guidance from the expert. It is a valuable experience, and you will definitely benefit from it. Step 5. After the advisory session, you are required to fill in a feedback form. Please do that, as it will help improve the program. Well, please, take action now. Start applying for the Business Virtual Advisory Clinic. It is free, but places are limited. So it is first come, first serve. 
Join our free business virtual advisory clinic session and learn from the best in the industry in an hour-long one-to-one session. You can improve your business and profitability. Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic. Are you running an ICT business? Do you face difficulties taking your business to the next level? Would you want advice or guidance from the industry experts to overcome your challenges? Digital Productivity Nexus, in collaboration with the ICT industry experts, will be guiding you through a virtual one-to-one session. The program is known as the Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic. You could join the Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session and ask the industry experts on how to enhance your business presence, deliver better services, and improve productivity. Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session will be focusing on the following six areas. Strategic positioning, technical solutions, business operation, financial consultation, legal and regulatory support, in business development and marketing solutions. Join our free Digital Victory Virtual Business Clinic session and learn from the best in the industry in a one-to-one virtual advisory session. Do take up this opportunity to improve your business and profitability. Let us go big with digital. Go big with digital. Digital Virtual Business Clinic. Contact us www.mpc.gov.my forward slash digital victory. Malaysiaவில் நீங்கள் வணிகம் நடத்துகிறீர்களா உரிமங்கள் அனுமதிகள் பதிவுகள் போன்றவற்றிற்கு விண்ணப்பிக்கும் போதும் மற்றும் ஆய்வுக்கு உட்படுத்தப்படும் போதும் ஒழுங்குமுறைகளுடன் இணைங்குவதில் நீங்கள் சவால்களை எதிர்கொள்கிறீர்களா ஒழுங்குமுறை இணைக்க சேவைகளில் சிலர் அவசியமில்லாதவை மற்றும் உங்கள் வணிகத்தில் தாக்கத்தை ஏற்படுத்துகின்றன என நீங்கள் எண்ணுகிறீர்களா மேலும் அத்தகைய தேவையற்ற ஒழுங்குமுறைகள் குறித்து யாரிடம் குறிப்பிடுவது என்று உறுதியாக உங்களுக்கு தெரியவில்லையா நீங்கள் எதிர்கொண்ட தேவையற்ற ஒழுங்குமுறை சுமைகளை குறைக்க அல்லது நீக்க மலேசியா அரசாங்கம் மலேசியா முடா அல்லது சுருக்கமாக மைமுடா எனப்படும் ஒரு திட்டத்தை தொடங்கியுள்ளது இவ்வாறு செய்கையில் உங்களது ஒழுங்குமுறை இணக்க செலவு அல்லது வணிகம் செய்வதற்கான செலவு குறைக்கப்படும் மலேசியா பிரதமர் பொது சேவைகளை மேலும் வணிக நட்பு ரீதியாகவும் விரைவாகவும் அனுமானிக்க கூடியதாகவும் மாற்ற பொருளாதார நடவடிக்கை மன்றத்தின் வாயிலாக முடிவு செய்துள்ளார் அத்தகைய அளவுகோள்கள் உங்களது வணிக வளர்ச்சி உற்பத்தி மற்றும் போட்டித்திறனுக்கு கடினமானவை என பிரதமர் அறிவார் உங்களுக்கான தேவையற்ற ஒழுங்குமுறைகளின் சில உதாரணங்களை நான் உன்னிலைப்படுத்தி காட்டுகிறேன் முதலாவதாக பிற ஒழுங்குமுறைகள் ஒன்றுடன் ஒன்று அல்லது முரண்பாடு கொண்டிருத்தல் இரண்டாவதாக தெளிவற்ற அல்லது கேள்விக்குரிய ஒழுங்குமுறைகளின் நோக்கங்கள் மூன்றாவதாக காலங்கடந்த ஒழுங்குமுறைகள் நான்காவதாக ஒரு ஒற்றை விண்ணப்பத்திற்காக கட்டுப்பாட்டாளர்களுடன் பல தொடர்பாளர்கள் ஐந்தாவதாக அதிகப்படியான காகித பணிகள் மற்றும் இணக்க தேவைகள் ஆறாவதாக உங்களது விண்ணப்பத்தை செயல்படுத்த மிக நீண்ட நேரம் எடுத்துக் கொள்ளுதல் அடுத்ததாக உங்களது குறைகளை நீங்கள் எவ்வாறு வழி நடத்த முடியும் அதற்கு என்ற வலைதலை முகவரியில் ஒருங்கிணைந்த பொது ஆலோசனை இணையதளத்திற்கு வருகை புரியவும் மேலும் தேவையற்ற ஒழுங்குமுறை சுமைகளை குறைக்க அல்லது நீக்க எவ்வாறு ஒழுங்குமுறை விநியோகத்தை மேம்படுத்தலாம் அல்லது புதுப்பிக்கலாம் என்பது குறித்தும் நீங்கள் பரிந்துரைக்கலாம் இதற்கான சிறந்த நடைமுறைகளை நீங்கள் அறிந்திருக்கக்கூடும் உங்களது கருத்துகள் மற்றும் பரிந்துரைகள் சமர்ப்பிக்கப்பட்டதும் மலேசியா உற்பத்தி கழகமான எம்பிசி கட்டுப்பாட்டாளர்கள் மற்றும் வணிகங்களுடன் பணியாற்றி பெமுடாவிற்கும் அதன் பின்னர் பொருளாதார நடவடிக்கை மன்றத்திற்கும் தீர்வுகளை பகுப்பாய்வு செய்யவும் சரிபார்க்கவும் பரிந்துரைக்கவும் செய்யும் 
மலேசியாவில் தேசிய மொழியில் முடா என்பதில் வியாபாரம் செய்வதை எளிதாக்குவதில் அரசாங்கம் தீவிரமாக உள்ளது என்று உறுதியாக நம்பலாம் அவ்வாறுதான் மைமுடா என்று சுருக்கம் வந்தது Eighty twenty rule, Pareto principle. What is the eighty twenty rule? Where can I apply the eighty twenty rule? Is eighty twenty rule useful for me? Well, eighty twenty rule, or sometimes known as the Pareto principle, says that about eighty percent of outcomes or outputs are caused by twenty percent of inputs. Historically, Pareto, who is an Italian economist, noticed that approximately eighty percent of Italy's land was owned by twenty percent of the population. He also surveyed other countries and found, to his surprise, that a similar distribution applied. In the USA, the top 20% of earners paid about 80 to 90% of federal income taxes. Meanwhile, in the healthcare in the USA, about 20% of patients used 80% of healthcare resources. How can I use 80/20 rule in my business? Well, you need to identify the top 20% of your customers that give you 80% of sales. Once identified. You need to prioritize them by providing better services that are beyond their expectation. How can I use 80/20 to improve my productivity? It's easy. Review a normal daily activities, and you'll notice about 20% of those activities contribute 80% of the betterment of your life. Once again, prioritize them. Give more attention to them. Those activities which are less critical must be replaced. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of two-minute smart management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. Do you know how long it takes your money to grow double through passive investment? Most people save money in banks. The banks give you, say, six percent interest per year. My question to you. If you save one thousand dollars, how long does it take to double your money to two thousand dollars? Let me tell you the secret. Well, it is simple enough. Simply do the following: seventy-two divides by six equals twelve years. Yes, it takes approximately twelve years for your money to grow from one thousand to two thousand dollars, on the assumption you did not take out or deposit any money during that period. It was easy, right? You now have mastered the rule 72, and keep investing. Well, how do you find the video? If you like to follow my new video releases on the topic of two minutes smart management, then do like, subscribe, and click the bell. See you in the next video. Are you aware that behavioral insights have been actively used in designing and implementing public policies in many countries throughout the world? Are you aware that behavioral insights could be a policy tool in addition to regulations and incentives? Do you know that Malaysia Productivity Corporation, or MPC in short, has been entrusted with developing and coordinating behavioral insights initiatives in Malaysia? Well, let me tell you about the process of how a behavioral insight project or case study is being carried out for the public sector. I hope that you might want to consider your organization to participate in behavioral insights projects to improve the effectiveness of your policies. Effective policies ensure a high probability of success for governments that intend to achieve their desired outcomes. There are eight steps for you to take part in with the community and public sector to make use of behavioral insights in policymaking. The first step is for you to express interest with MPC that you want to know about using behavioral insights application in public policymaking. How? It is simple. Just contact or send an email to the Director General of MPC. Step two: You will be contacted, and an initial discussion will be set up via an online meeting platform to discuss your interest further. Step three: Your team will be invited for an onboarding program to familiarize them about behavioral insights through structured online training and online workshops. At the end of the journey, potential projects are identified to be considered for using the behavioral insights approach. Step four: A team will be formed, compromising your organization team, MPC team, and academia team. 
The multi-teams or collaborations have proven to be a successful model for behavioral insights projects. Step 5. The project starts. The project starts with an understanding of the problem statement and the team will validate it. Data collection to understand the as-is behavior will be carried out. Finally, the behavioral gaps are identified. Step 6 is to establish the objectives of the project. Solutions are explored and designed usage of nudges typically are preferred. By using nudges, the target people are directed towards the selected option without removing the right for them to choose from various options. Step 7. Experiments are conducted for a while with a sample population. Most of the project makes use of the random control trial where groups of people are set up and given different nudges. At the time of the experiments, data is collected and the results are produced. Finally, step 8. Conclusions of the study and which nudges are the best is derived. Based on your findings, your organization's management may decide on potentially expanding the project to a bigger size of the population. Well, usage of behavioral insights has been proven in many countries around the world to be as effective as a policy tool. My recommendation is that your organization should seriously consider using behavioral insights in your policy design and implementation. One thing is for sure, the behavioral insights approach is very cost-effective as compared to regulatory or incentive-based methods. Well, join us at NPC to experiment using behavioral insights in public policymaking. We are entrusted to facilitate public service organizations to establish a competent behavioral insights team in your organization to continuously make use of behavioral insights in decision-making. Well, see you in our next Behavior Insights video. Let me end by quoting, Managing behaviors is the key to achieving the desired outcomes. Virtual Advisory Clinic, BAC for MEPN. Are you facing difficulties in operating your business due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic? Are you worried about the future of your company? And you are not sure where to refer for advice? Well, the Machinery and Equipment Productivity Nexus, MEPN, is ready to facilitate you in providing guidance. MEPN was set up to improve the productivity of firms, sector, and the country. The solutions came from industry in the private and public partnership of MEPN. We invite you to join the MPC Virtual Advisory Clinic for machinery and equipment. Experienced industry advisors will be there to guide you. Contact us and we will see you virtually using online meeting for one hour. And together, we will work with you to find solutions to your challenges. Do contact MPC Advisory Clinic for machinery and equipment, MEPN at mpc.gov.my. COVID-19. By now, everyone knows about this global pandemic. Stay home, social distancing, lockdown was heard every time. Before, works were carried out from offices. Now, stay home, fight COVID-19. It is time to fully utilize technology. Online meeting, online learning, online seminar, online shopping, etc. New work culture developed. Works get done via digitalization using technology and internet. We boost performance, be productive and competitive. My personal advice, stay home and stay productive. From me, Dr. Rizar. Jom bayar tanpa duit tunai. Tahukah anda, ramai rakyat Malaysia telah membuat bayaran tanpa menggunakan duit tunai. Bilangan transaksi melalui perbankan internet semakin meningkat. Jumlah wang dikeluarkan dari mesin ATM semakin menurun. Sekarang, perniagaan anda hanya menerima bayaran tunai sahaja. Perniagaan kita boleh bertambah maju jika kita juga bersedia menerima bayaran tanpa duit tunai. Pelanggan baru boleh berbelanja di kedai kita. Ada pelbagai cara untuk membuat bayaran kepada anda tanpa guna duit tunai. Apakah faedah kalau kita bayar tanpa guna duit tunai? Mudah, duit selamat, akaun tersusu rapi. Jom sertai siri seminar atas talian webinar tentang bayaran tanpa duit tunai. Percuma dan daftar sekarang.
eShared Prosperity Organization, ESPO. Do you know there are about 100,000 organizations in Malaysia that are classified as a shared prosperity organization? Is your organization one of them? Would you like to know whether your organization qualifies to be recognized as a shared prosperity organization? In line with Malaysia Shared Property Vision 2030, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry is collaborating with the Ministry of Human Resources and the Malaysia Productivity Corporation to identify and recognize shared prosperity organizations. We want to build a database of shared prosperity organizations and make it available to the public. The government recognizes your efforts in sharing wealth with your employees. Here are a few simple steps to check whether your organization qualifies as a shared prosperity organization. Step 1. Browse www.mpc.gov.my backslash ESPO. Step 2. Answer 14 simple survey questions. Step 3. You will immediately get the result. If your organization qualifies, congratulations! An SPO recognition certificate will be issued to you. The recognition would elevate your organization's image as a good employer and more people would want to work for your organization. Well, let's start the process of becoming a shared prosperity organization. www.mpc.gov.my/espo